Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, Episode 5. Today we're going to talk about a pretty highly requested topic, building web applications in Go. So before we get started, I want to mention that uh, we just passed 500 subscribers on the YouTube channel, and this repository just got 100, uh, sorry, uh, over 100 stars now. I want to mention that I'm really humbled that you guys think highly enough of this program to do all those subscriptions and voting. I'm um, just going to ask you guys to tell your friends and coworkers, or otherwise spread the word um, because that feedback really motivates me a ton. Uh, just really, really happy that I can bring you guys all this quality content. So let's get started now. So as I said before, we're talking about building a full stack uh, HTTP uh, web app server. So we're talking about serving HTML, static assets, uh, serving an API, so you could also build uh, an uh, iPhone app or an Android app or something like that. We're also talking about a server that in the Go way is built with a, a bunch of smaller libraries that each of which focuses on a single responsibility. And you'll see that uh, in this code base I'm about to show. So since it's a huge topic, we're really just going to focus on database communication, rendering templates, and serving out those APIs. And of course, I'll show work and code at the end. So let's jump right into the code. So we've got a couple packages, a handlers package here, a models package, and a util package. And in our main, uh, I'll go through this pretty quickly. Uh, we've configured the app here. We set up our template renderer. We set up our database. We set up our paths, again, using Gorilla Mux. And then we use a Negroni library to handle all of our middleware and run the server. So first of all, we'll go into our database. Again, the database is an interface. This package, or excuse me, this repository has an in-memory implementation and a Mongo implementation. You can see it's just a key value database, but you can, of course, modify this to handle any kind of data model you'd like. And we'll get into our template renderer here. Again, the renderer is an interface, and we have provided a implementation for a specific package called Unrolled Render, which is here on line 7. So besides that, our last uh, topic here that we're going to talk about today is an API. So this API handles getting a list of all the candies we have. And by the way, this is a web application that simulates uh, trick-or-treating, uh, which is part of the American holiday of Halloween, which just passed yesterday. So this is a get endpoint that returns all the candies that we have in our candy bucket. And this is an endpoint here that can create a new candy to put into the candy bucket that then everybody can come later and get new candies. And then of course, one more thing I'll mention here. This is the index page that renders HTML for the index template. And this is the candies page that renders HTML for the candies template. And then we'll jump into the templates real quick. We'll see we've got the candies page, very simple. The index page, also very simple. And then the layout page, which handles all of the common uh, HTML that's needed to render those standard index and candies pages. You can see here, this is a function of the unrolled render package. All of the data that we saw in candies and index.html goes in here as, uh, in the yield. And then everything else is just common to all of the pages. So without further ado, let's get right into some uh, an example here. I'm going to close down the already running server. We're going to rebuild. Now that that's done, we're going to set up some configuration, which is just in the form of environment variables. We'll set our port. We'll set our environment. And then we'll just go run it. So Negroni, that package I showed before, says we're running on port 8080. We'll load that up. We can see, here you go. This is the index page. We're going to view source. You can see there's all the source from the layout page and then right here from the actual index.html page. We will click through to the candies page. Now this is all being rendered with Facebook's React.js library, so I encourage you to check that out as well and check out the code in this repo. We'll create a couple new candies, which again are being created with React.js. And that React.js is talking to that create candy API endpoint that I showed. So we've created two of my favorite candies. 
And the last piece is we'll just refresh the page to show that these candies are actually being persisted to the database. And there you have it. So that's all for today. Uh, I encourage you guys to go in and look at the code base. Uh, the code base is extensible, as I said, but it's also pretty representative of um, uh, some code that handles most, if not all, of the concerns that would be present in a standard web app stack. So go in there, pick and choose, and see if there's anything you can use. Um, and beyond that, uh, I welcome pull requests or uh, new issues for suggestions of ways to improve that code base because the Go ecosystem for web apps is fairly young and always growing. So thanks again, everybody, for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Take care.